before we can go into equations. So if you're keeping track right now, we're going to start chapter 3, and we'll be on 3.1 for the rest of our day. Start us off with simplifying expressions. Firstly, I need you to identify that this thing is, in fact, an expression. Why is this an expression and not an equation? No equal sign. Good. So expressions don't have those equal signs. Equations do. So right now, we're, we're in the expressions zone again. Before we start simplifying full-on expressions, we need to talk about how to combine like terms. Here's how we're going to do this, because this is a major part of what we do in this class, is combining like terms. Firstly, instead of just rushing at combining like terms, I want to talk about what a term is, then I want to talk about what a like term is, then I want to talk about how to combine like terms. So we're going to build up to this. Oh my. That looks scary at first, but don't worry, we're not going to be doing a whole lot with this. I'm going to teach you what terms are by looking at this thing. So we're going to talk about the word terms. When we say a term, I can ask you this question. Here's what I'm going to ask you in about 10 seconds. How many terms there are up here? Now before you answer that, before you go there, there's, one, two, three, there's like eight terms. Before you say something like that, I want to tell you what a term means. In an expression, a term means something that is separated by a plus or a minus, by a plus or a minus. So I want you to look at the pluses and minuses. Count how many things are separated by pluses and minuses. How many do you have? Four. four. Yeah, four, yeah. Our terms up here are four terms. We're going to list them out. i got to tell you that the terms go with the sign that is in front of them. So let me do the first two examples for you. The first term that we have up here is 4y cubed. That's the first thing. So 4y cubed is a term. Can you tell me my next term? Okay, now it goes with the sign in front of it. It goes with the sign in front of it. So notice how that's a, there's a sign in front of that 3xy. We're going to consider that to be a negative 3xy. It goes with that term. Are you with me on this? Yes. Now, if you don't understand why, let me explain to you why. Okay, this is kind of an important concept because I don't want you just to assume that a minus means a negative. It doesn't. But here's what you could do. I'm never going to have you show this to me, but I want to show you why this works the way it does, why terms include the negative um, with them. Do you remember that instead of writing 4y cubed minus 3xy, I could write 4y cubed plus negative 3xy. Do you remember how you can change a minus into a plus negative? That says that that negative now is included with that term. You with me on that? So that's why that negative goes with it. You're kind of doing this in your head when you say my next term is negative 3xy. You're kind of just cheating the problem a little bit and doing that in your head. So if you remember that the terms go with the sign in front of them, you'll be just fine. With that in mind, can you tell me the next term that I have, everybody? Good. And what's the final term? Good, it goes with the sign, so we get negative 9. You okay with the terms? Yes. Sweet, sweet. Now you're going to notice a difference between these types of these terms up here. We of course have four terms, but three of them are the same and one of them is different. Which one is the different one? Why? Because it doesn't have a variable. Right. So we have two different types of terms. We have what are called variable terms, and we have constant terms. The variable terms are named so because they have variables in them. So right up here, we're going to have our variable terms. Mm -hmm. 
a number all by itself without a variable is called a constant term. Now, the, the term variable means it can change depending on the number you plug in, right? That's what's a variable. You can plug in whatever number you want. Does a constant term ever change? For example, no. is negative 9 ever going to change? No, because it's constant. Right. You, well, it, it, no matter what you plug in, the negative 9, there's nothing attached to it. It's not changing. So we call it the constant as in it doesn't change. Constant terms are just constant terms. There's not much we can really say about them, but we can say a couple things about our variable terms. Every variable term has a couple parts to it. There's the coefficient and there's the variable. Say coefficient for me. Coefficient. Good. Yeah, we need to pronounce that, that correctly. Coefficient. The coefficient, so we'll write this out, every, every variable term has two parts to it, the coefficient and what's called the variable part. Every variable term has a coefficient and a variable part. Well, those are three variable terms. I'm going to put one up here just for fun. What I'd like to do is talk about the coefficients and the variable part. So I've listed out four terms over here. Let's look at four, oh, you know what, I said x, I meant y. Let's say four y cubed, four y cubed. That's definitely a variable term, right, because it has a variable in it. The coefficient is simply the number in front of the variable. It's just the number itself. So the coefficient is the number that you're looking at right now. What's the number you're looking at right now? Four. four. That's the coefficient. It's just the number. The variable part is all the variable stuff. So what's our variable part in 4y cubed? Y. Y cubed. Y cubed, that's right. It goes with the cube. The number is the coefficient. Everything else, all the variable stuff, that's the variable part. Let's do the next one. Can you tell me what the coefficient is? Yeah, it does go with the sign. So that's going to be negative 3. And the variable part, folks? That's one. Good. Now, how about these two? Oh, you know what? Let me change this one. Let me make that negative x. Sorry about that. How about this one? That's just an x. Does it have a coefficient? One. Yeah, it has a hidden coefficient. When you say x, you have like one x. So when we say this, the coefficient is actually one, and the variable part is still x. So anytime you see a variable all by itself, it's implied that it has a coefficient of 1. Are you clear on that one? Yeah. Okay, so that means when we get to combine like terms, and you see an x by itself, it doesn't mean 0x, it means 1x. That actually means something. You have to add that on there, or subtract. And then finally, negative x. What's the coefficient for negative x, do you think? Negative 1. Very good. So negative 1, and the variable part is, again, x. So whenever we have no number up front, we imply that that's a 1, and we carry the sign with it. Rachel, you have a question? Why is it a negative x, not negative 9? That's, I, I was just putting another one up there, just for fun. This one didn't have anything to do with that. I just want to make sure you saw the negative x, OK? Yeah. The negative 9, we can't talk about that as a variable term, because it, it doesn't have a variable. So we just say that's a constant. It's just negative 9. Good question. Ladies and gentlemen, did today, did today make sense for you? Yeah, How many people feel pretty OK about this? Good, okay. I think I should With that in mind, if I put this on the board.
Can you tell me, everybody, take some time, look at that thing. Can you tell me how many terms there would be in this problem? Uh, yeah, that's the things that are separated by pluses and minuses. Uh, everybody here, what's your very first term, please? Good, so that right there, that's our first term. Can you tell me my second term? X. Okay, remember that the term goes with the sign in front of it. So it's negative X, it goes with the sign. Uh, remember, that's because I can write a minus as plus a negative, so the negative is included with the term. Are you with me on this? Okay, so uh, let's keep on going. How about the, bless you, the third term? Negative Z squared. Y Z squared. Great, you said the negative, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, okay. How about the next term? Negative And lastly, the last term is? Negative X. Okay. Can you tell me which one of these is the constant term? Negative Good. And the rest of them have variables, therefore they're vari variable terms. What is the coefficient coefficient of this term right there? What's the coefficient? Good. Somebody else, what's the coefficient of this term? Is it 7 or negative 7? It goes with the sign, so it's negative 7. Very good. You guys have the idea about the terms and the coefficients down? The next thing we have to determine is we know these things called terms. We know what coefficients are. The coefficients are just the numbers in front of our terms. That's all it means. We have variable terms. Those are the ones with variables. We have constant terms. Those are just the numbers. The only thing we haven't talked about is like terms. Because we're supposed to be combining like terms in this section, we've gotten terms. We haven't really got to combining yet because we have to talk about what like terms are first. So what in the world are like terms? Like the same. That's exactly right. In fact, we mean like terms as the same type of term. Here's how we determine whether two terms are considered like terms or not. It's really you look at the variable part. If two terms have the same variable part, what that means for you in like English, hope you're listening right now, is it means same variable with the same exact exponents. That's what a like term will be. It has the same exact variable part. Are you with me on this? Yes. Not just the same variable, not just the same exponent, same variable raised to the same exponent. That's what we're looking for. So when we talk about like terms, we're talking about terms that have exactly the same variable part, that's the same variables to the same powers. I'll write that down here also. The same variable part means the same variable raised to the same exponent. Let's see if we have this down. I'm going to put some examples on the board. What we're going to try to do is just identify some like terms up here. <coughs> what this says is 13.